angels with God's glory on the wings, like the voice of many warders, I can hear the angels sing. This is the realm of your glory. This is the realm of your. To see your face, you are holy. You are holy. We join the elders and the angels. Holy and righteous, you are holy. You are holy. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. Listen, we are going to pray in the spirit for the next five minutes. Now, in case you don't know how to pray in tongues, don't worry. The atmosphere is already stirred. It's going to come on you. But let me tell you, the Bible says, pray with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. There are certain levels, certain dimensions of God you cannot capture until the prayer or the worship comes from deep within you are we together there's going to be a breakthrough in this place the lord is going to move mightily in this place this evening but i want you to pray and say lord my heart is open in the next five minutes let that prayer be the opening of your heart the opening of your desire to him expecting that god will visit you lift your voice and pray cry Arabako shaka balada braski bahas. Arakaba sikaba. Come on, raise your voice, raise your voice. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Arus katabranda bregedele kita sobalia daha. Arakaza branda daha balia bas. Eka banda branda balia kalo kalos. Arabasia bakora bahasi. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. We expect the visitation. We expect the touch from you. We have not come before a man. We have not come to see a man. We have come to see a God that walketh wonders. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Ala <laughs> This is the generation of them that are seeking. That seek your face, so check up. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer. Listen, listen, just listen before we pray. Listen. I have never seen a scripture that says that God meets men according to the point of their needs. That's just a statement, you know, of human sympathy as it were. I've never seen. I'm yet to see the scripture that says God meets men according to the point of their needs. Rather, the Bible says the expectation of the just. The difference between your need and your expectation is that your expectation is the vocalization of your faith. One of the greatest miracles that was recorded by Jesus himself in scripture was about a woman who cried desperately, the Syrophoenician woman. The Bible says she kept pleading with him, crying. And even when she was restrained, the Bible said she kept crying until Jesus stood still. This night, I want you to know that you didn't come before a man. Listen, bring it down a little. You didn't come if you just came to see a service. Then that's, that's, the, that's the end for you. And that could always be a waste of time. But if you came because you know that there is a God who has covenanted himself in this place. That there is a God that walketh wonders without numbers. As Job said. If you know that you have come before a God that is more than able. Not a man. If it was a man, we can doubt his ability. But the Bible says he's able to do exceeding abundantly. I'd like you to pray. Listen, I want you to pray until the sound of your prayer equals your faith. Are we together? I want you in the next two minutes, lift your voice and say, Lord, I table my expectation before you tonight. I cannot go back the same. Just like blind Bartimaeus cried. Just like Bartimaeus cried, Jesus, son of David, lift your voice and cry. Raise your voice and cry to him. He can hear you. He can hear you. He can hear you. Come on, somebody.
the covenant keeping Thank you, Jesus. Father, tonight, visit us, visit us with your mighty, mighty, wonder-working power. I ask that no soul will leave this place the same. I pray that your power will manifest in this place like never before. Flood this place with the atmosphere of your presence. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. And let your name be glorified. Let your people be lifted. Let your people be lifted. Let there be an overflow of your grace. An overflow of your grace. An overflow of your grace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please take your seat. God bless you. Blessed be your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to welcome every one of us to this April miracle service. And I believe God beyond every reasonable doubt. That God is going to visit everybody here. This is not going to be that service where some will receive and some will not. This is that service where there is an overflow of grace. And listen to me. I want you to take advantage of... Listen, I want to teach us something. Let me teach you how to receive from God. When you come into the presence of God, you must come expectant. First of all, you must know that He is God of the earth. He is Lord over all. There is abundance of grace wherever his presence is to meet every need as it were, even to the overflow. And so when you come, you must be conscious of that overflow of his grace. And then you don't just stand and watch other people receive. You don't wish that peradventure God will visit me. No, it doesn't happen like that. No, no. It takes two for this thing to work. You don't just stand. And wish that if it is the will of God. No. No. There was a leper who met Jesus one time. And he told him, he said, if you will, you will make me clean. Jesus said, I'm willing. I'm more than willing. He is more than able to touch us. What is hard or what is so great that God cannot do? So when you come into the presence of God, you must come with an expectation. And that expectation must create a hunger. A desire inside of you that, that, that gives you the proportion to press into God. 
just the way the woman with the issue of blood she had she had a condition she was already disadvantaged but the bible says she said to herself if i can but touch she knew that there were many conditions that would not allow that statement to find expression so the bible says she went into the press and that's what faith does you don't just stand and wish like god if god will visit me no sir no man you may go back like that too and it will not be god's fault the bible says jesus was teaching in a place one time and the power of god was present to heal yet he didn't heal anybody why because that place was full of pharisees and sadducees people who were calculative about the move of god i would say people who were not expectant and it doesn't matter who you are when you come when we come before god we are all the same whether man of God, woman of God, pastor, young boy, young girl, young believer, married or single, when we come before him, all the earth and heavens tremble before him. So we must be conscious that it is before his presence we have come. And my Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. No, no. All other gods. They are the works of men. You are the only God. And there is no life. All other God. They are the works of men. You are the living God. And there is Moses said, Who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? None in heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. There's no questioning of his power, no questioning of his greatness. He was not voted in by anybody. He remains the same from beginning to the end. As a matter of fact, he is the beginning and the end. Glorious in and fearful in always to in one That's the God you have come before. Listen. <laughs> Other gods have eyes, but they don't see. Other gods have ears, but they don't hear. Remember what Elijah told the prophets of Baal? He said, you may need to cry louder. Maybe your God went on a journey. Maybe he's sleeping, you need to wake him up. But the Bible says that he that keepeth Israel neither sleep. Quit thinking that God operates like men. Quit that thinking. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing keeps him bound. He's not limited by time. He's not limited by space. He's not limited by anything. The only thing that can limit him is your faith. And so tonight, I want you to believe. 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 This is not just another service. You will just come and go. No, no. I came expectant myself. I came expectant. While I was in the room this afternoon, that was even why I came late. I was praying and I forgot the time. And I began to sense a heavy atmosphere of the anointing on my life. So I knew that God must visit people. You can't just come and go like that. No. Listen, let me tell you. I've, I've discovered this with many believers. Many believers have not really given God space enough in their life. For him to display his power and his presence. How? That there are certain needs in their life that they feel God cannot solve. And that's the reason why you see that's the reason why we pray prayer is the greatest sign of humility before god so when you don't pray your prayerlessness is a is a message to heaven a message that you can do it on your own and that's the message of pride the only humble men pray that's the bible that's why the bible says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves so when we come before him and we pray, don't, don't stay like some believers who feel that there are things God can do and there are things God cannot do. I believe God can touch my neighbor, but not me. 
I believe God will move in this place, but I will still go back with my sickness. Some, in fact, some of them call it my sickness. That's the state of many believers. That's the reason why they come into the presence of God and go back the same. Because it's not the presence of God in itself that guarantees transformation. No. It is when a man is yielded to that presence. It is when a man is submissive to that power. That's when true change can come. And this night, I'd like you to see. i like you to make a demand. In fact, pray in one minute. Demand to heaven that you will not go back the same. Place a demand on heaven. Let your prayer mount pressure on the gates of heaven. Lord, I cannot come into this place where your power and your presence is visible and go back the same. Harabaka sotobalana. Come and pray. Come and pray. Come and pray. Shabranto Brahadis. How can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. How can I call? your name and end up in shame no way say no way for you are you are my God you are you Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Oh Jesus, I tell you there's a strong anointing in this place. There's a strong atmosphere. Of the power and the glory of God in this place. You, my God. You are my God. Alakanda sobra diatana. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place, Omnipotent Father of mercy. Thou art welcome in this Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in Angradiga Sobraha de Lekizia Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome. I'm 
Ratha Laka Pradisepa. Under this atmosphere, yokes are broken, burdens are lifted. Kato Brandila Haba. Hallelujah. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in this place. She Something new in this place. Something new in this place. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for like you. This is response to you. From beginning to the end, there's no place. Hey. There's no place for you a glory and worthy to be praised. that God is touching now. This is your moment. In every situation that has trouble.
trouble, troubled your mind. All I cares and worries unto you. We Join me and call his name Jesus. Jesus. Call him Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Call on his name. Jesus. Come on, I dare you to call that name again two more times. destinies be changed let men climb onto new ladders in the spirit let it be an overflow a rain of your glory in this place just be still for one minute what he's going to do tonight. Fountain of heaven, feel us, overwhelm us till we want no, no more. Feel this place here tonight 
Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, quickly. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Once again, every one of us is welcome. Men of God that are around, God bless you. We honor you. We take our time to do that towards the end of the service. And I want you to know tonight that you are under a grace. You are under an atmosphere that will compel change. True transformation. Breakthrough like you require in every area of your life. Some of you, God brought you to this meeting not really because you need any physical miracle, but because He wants to shift you in the realm of the Spirit. He wants to bring you into new dimensions. I sense the fountain for that. And my God will never disappoint anyone here. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are certain things that happen, certain movements in the natural and in the spiritual, certain occurrences, so that men can identify when the Spirit of God is in a place. Frankly speaking, of course, many of us know that there are several spirits there are different kinds of spirits just like there are different kinds of human beings but the spirit of god is distinguished among other spirits in the entire universe being that he is the king spirit he is the chief of all spirits the bible says by him were all things made every thing whether visible or invisible whether spirit or flesh can trace their existence, their birthing, and their livelihood to Him. And so every time the Spirit of God is present in the place, the Bible says there are certain things by which you will see, certain occurrences, certain manifestations for you to know that this is the Spirit of God or that the Spirit of God is in this place. And out of many things, the Bible says liberty is one of them. It says, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Sometimes I like reading it like this. Where the Spirit is Lord. You know, that's, that's a different thing. Where the Spirit is Lord. Because the Spirit can be in a human body and not be Lord yet. Lord means owner. Sovereign ruler. Controller over all. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is. In other words, where the Spirit of God is allowed to find expression as King, as Lord, as controller. Where He is giving space. And that's the difference between a nominal Christian and a Christian that is spiritual. A Christian that is spiritual is one who doesn't just have the Spirit of God by reason of new birth. But has been submerged into the very life of the Spirit has been submerged into in other words baptized covered that is what it means to be filled with the spirit to be filled with the spirit doesn't mean that you receive the holy spirit again no listen this is not part of my teaching but let me sound it to us when you become born again as a believer the bible says we are sealed by God through the Holy Spirit that he gives us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14 that the Spirit of God in us is the seal the guarantee that we are God's own so when you become born again the Spirit of God comes and tabernacles in you but then baptism of the Spirit doesn't mean that you receive the Spirit again because it's one what it means is that you become submerged in him it's one thing for you to have him and it's another thing for you to be submerged in him give you the example like a boat that is on water that water is touching is touching the water right it's touching the water 
But is the boat saturated with the water? No. Until the boat sinks. That's what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It means that what is inside of you overwhelms you. Totally saturates you. And it is at that point that in reality you lose your old life. And you begin to express a new life. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty means number one, freedom of expression. So if you go to a place and you don't find people expressing the life of God in them freely, it means that the Spirit of God is either not there or He is not there as Lord. That's why David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. Because the house of God is the place of expression. Because all of us come together with one spirit. The Bible says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We are united with one spirit. That spirit begins to trigger activities from the inside of us that must be expressed in adoration to him. Because expression in the house of God is worship to God. Not like expression outside. People express themselves outside. Some, at some point it may be tantamount to misbehavior. But expression in the house of God, especially when it is propelled by the Spirit of God, is worship to Him. So if you don't express when you are in the house of God, you are denying Him of worship. And it's only proud people that do that. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Forget about church doctrine and denomination. The Bible says that men will pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Lifting up holy hands. In other words, freedom of expression. That there is a joy because of the life that is at work inside of you. And that life makes you to lift your hands. To lift your voice in adoration and worship to him. Because he's the one we worship, not men. Many people come to church and mind their neighbor as though their neighbor is their God. Was it the neighbor that gave you life? Is it the neighbor that will meet you according to your expectation? No. It is before Elohim. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. Oh, ye servants of the Lord. You know that song? Who by night stand? Who by in the presence of the Lord in the house I like this part lift up your hands liberty of expression to the holy name So number one, freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. That's why the psalmist encourages men to sing, to clap, to dance. Because the spirit that is at work in us is the spirit of life and vitality. It's only in the burial ground that you find quietness. Except the, that church or that gathering of believers want to suggest or want to recommend themselves as burial ground. Do you understand that? When you come to a place they call a church and the people are quiet all through a service, that's a, that's a makeshift burial ground. So freedom of expression. But then, the Bible also says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Meaning, freedom from all kinds of oppression. Understand that if the Spirit of God and His presence in the place connotes liberty from oppression, it means that there are other spirits whose presence in a place or in a body compels oppression. Demon spirits. Just like it is the nature of the Spirit of God, liberty, the nature of demon spirits are oppression. Every time you find a demon in a place, 
Oppression is the order of the day. It's not something they do. It's part of them. Do you understand? The presence of God, which is manifested by the Spirit of God, shows you that His character is liberty. God always, he's, it's in His nature to see men walk free into their destiny. So also, demon spirits and the devil, it is their nature to oppress. So the devil doesn't need to come and sit on your head. He just has to be in that place. One time I was praying for a woman. And then we prayed that night. And around morning, I think around 5 a.m. or so, I decided to go to rest. As soon as I laid down and closed my eyes, all of a sudden I couldn't move my body. My, 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 my radio, my MP3 was playing. All of a sudden it stopped. Life, I'm telling you what happened. It stopped playing. I looked at, I didn't pause the phone, nothing. It just stopped playing and I couldn't move. And then I knew inside of me that there was a demon spirit there. Now you see, when that kind of thing happens, don't waste your time trying to struggle with your physical body. You cannot fight in the flesh what is spiritual. There has to be another method by which you can combat that. So as soon as I noticed I couldn't move, I just sat down. And I was laughing inside of me. And then the Spirit of God compelled me to begin to, begin to pray in tongues. In less than 15 seconds, my body was free. But before that freedom, I turned with my left head and I saw a, a, a creature on my wall like a bed. That's why, you know, well, I pray that God grants discernment to you. Demon spirits have different forms. I saw a creature like a bird, very black with its wings. And one thing I noticed about that spirit was that, number one, its presence brought oppression. The spirit didn't come to me. He was just in my room. And all of a sudden, I, I was oppressed. I couldn't move. This is me. Oh, here it is me. It's me. No, I'm not that kind of man of God who will be hiding. No, I will tell you what I saw and how I conquered it. Number two, that the presence of that spirit is evil. In other words, that's the greatest definition of evil. You don't know the meaning of evil until you meet an evil spirit. The presence of the spirit defines itself. That's the difference between spirits and men. The identity of a man may be on his face or may be by the things that you hear concerning it. But in the realm of the spirit, that is the realm of truth and justice. Everything the Bible says in Hebrews chapter, chapter 4, it says all things lay bare and naked before him. In the realm of the spirit, there is no hiding. Everything carries its, de its definition. If an evil spirit is in a place, the presence of that spirit defines evil. You will just know that this is evil. But the Bible says that the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness. I tell you, it was not up to 15 seconds. It, 15 seconds is even too much. Because it all happened like a flash. And you would think that after that experience, I'll stand up to pray. I just closed my eyes and slept off. Down the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Where the spirit of the Lord is. He brings liberty from all kinds of oppression. Anything that places an impediment before a man. Anything that places limitation before a man. Anything that applies restraint on the life of any man on earth is oppression. Doesn't matter what it is. Joblessness. Affliction in health. Poverty. Name it. But where the Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Why? Why was there such an abundance of, of the anointing on him? Why was there such an abundant capacity of grace on his life? Why was there such a, a magnanimous disbursement of the presence of the Spirit of God on him? Because God knew that he was going to go around a region where everybody was oppressed. And if truly he carried the spirit of God that made him the son of God, he must bring liberty. 
The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim what? Liberty to the captives. So if the Spirit of God is present in a place, there must be liberty from all kinds of oppression. And you know one thing with oppression? Because oppression is sponsored or propelled by demon spirits, sometimes, sometimes, the oppression can be so much in the life of that individual and it can last so long that it becomes a stronghold. Even the individual doesn't know that they are, they are oppressed by demons. Most of the people that went to Jesus' crusades didn't go there because they wanted deliverance. Some of them didn't even know that they had demons. Just like under this atmosphere, if there are spirits manipulating in any area of your life that you are unaware of because demon spirits thrive under the cover of darkness. Are we together? They, they thrive on as long as Satan can confide, confine it from you. That he is at work in a particular situation in your life. That's it. So is it possible for an unbeliever to be oppressed? Yes, in fact, an unbeliever carries the spirit of the devil. Yeah. You know what God told me? And I pray one day I'll, I'll, I'll have time to be able to teach us. I was just asking the Lord some questions. And this is what the Lord told me. You know, believers carry the Spirit of God in them. Is that it? Good. And you get the Spirit of God when you are born again. So when you are not born again, what spirit are you carrying? Because when you are not born again, the spirit dimension of you is off. In other words, your life is not the spirit that is inside of you. Your life is now the breath that you breathe. It is when you are not born again that truly your life is oxygen. As biology told us. It is an unbeliever whose life is in oxygen. Not a believer. So what spirit? Because if the spirit realm controls the physical. So what kind of spirit can you find in an unbeliever? Being that they are not born again and the spirit dimension of them is cut off. Very simple. They carry demon spirits in them. How do I know? Their desires attract the spirit that is commensurate or that is compatible with their desires. And the desire of an unbeliever is lost, which is compatible with the character of a demon spirit. So when a man is not born again, his desires which are in the flesh, naturally attract the spirits that are compatible with it. For instance, if his desire is money, he attracts the spirit of greed. And he becomes possessed. Isn't it? And at such, as long as he's possessed, he has been brought under oppression. Because that's what demons do. That's what the devil does. Everywhere he goes, oppression is the atmosphere he carries. It's his nature, it's his life to oppress. So is it possible for an unbeliever to be oppressed? Yes. But is it possible for a believer to be oppressed? Who carries the Holy Ghost? And you will not believe my answer. Yes. Because you carry the Spirit of God in your spirit. But then the, 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 the bridge between the realm of the spirit and the physical is your mind, your soul. And as long as that place has not been totally saturated with the word of God, in other words, has not been transformed into the likeness of Christ and has not been brought under submission to the government of God, that soul, that mind becomes a breeding ground for the enemy. And that's where your desires are. So it is possible for a man to be born again to carry the spirit of God in him. But then be oppressed. Because the soul realm, if it is not totally submissive to the will of God. If it has not been conformed to the word of God. If it has not been transformed. If the mind has not been renewed. It becomes an open space for demons to come in. And through that barrier or that bridge. They can find expression in the life of that individual. And I told you that anywhere you find Satan or demon spirits, you find oppression. It's possible for a Christian to be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and be oppressed. 
Satan will take advantage of the darkness, the ignorance. That's the reason why when Jesus started his ministry, the Bible declares in Matthew chapter 4, the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9, it says that the people who dwelt in darkness has seen a great light. He said, and of those who dwelt in the, shadow of the, in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shone. Not just light in your spirit, but light in your mind. An awakening that comes to your mind, your soul. And makes you begin to operate and function in the God class. So it is possible for a man to be born again and still be oppressed. But the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so the first expression of that was when Jesus was anointed on earth. The Bible says he went about doing good. Because everywhere he went, there was oppression. And the spirit he carried, carried an atmosphere of freedom and liberation. The Bible says that he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Hold on. That's Acts 10, 8, right? He says he healed all who were oppressed of the devil. I thought the Bible would say who were oppressed of devils. Because there are many human beings on earth. So I thought one demon to every unbeliever. But the Bible says all of them in that region, in that territory. So it is possible for one spirit to oppress a particular territory. It is possible for one demon to, to oppress a family. It is possible for a spirit to build a stronghold of oppression on a nation. It is. That's what he said. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. All were oppressed, but by one person. And he does it in many ways. By possessing people through the ignorance of the people. But the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Tonight, there are yokes that will break in our lives. Some of you, as you sit listening to me, you may not even know that there is an area of your life where the enemy has trespassed and is illegally manipulating and building a fortification. But I give you a clue. Any area in your life that doesn't look like the promises of God, that doesn't look like the Christ, any area in your life that mocks your faith or your Christianity, I tell you that's an area where Satan is trying to bring and enforce oppression. And if the Spirit of God is here, that oppression must be broken. You know we are celebrating Easter. And the real person to be celebrated in Easter is the Holy Spirit. Why do I say so? Jesus died and was rose again. Or, or, or was raised from the dead. Notice the Bible didn't say Jesus came back to life. The Bible says he was raised from the dead. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. It says Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Meaning that when Jesus died, he was under the hold of death. I hope you know death is a spirit too. And remember every spirit that is not of God carries the characteristics of what? Oppression. So when Jesus died and went down, he came under the oppression of death. But the Bible says in chapter 6 verse 4, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, on his own he wouldn't have done it. He took the glory of the Father. And the glory of the Father is the Holy Spirit. I hope you are listening to what I'm saying. So some people will say, ah, this one you are preaching, we don't understand. No, this is scripture. He was raised. Not that he came back to life. No, he was raised. And when you read 1 Corinthians, the Bible said, by reason of his death and resurrection, he has become the life-giving spirit. When he was on earth, he took up flesh as Jesus. But now that he has been resurrected, he has taken up the form of the spirit. So not only was he raised from the dead, but he has become a dispenser of that life that conquers death. That's why the Bible says that Christ has been raised from the dead. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 that this is how it is in succession. It says, just like by one man sin and death entered the world, so also by one man life. 
So if Adam became the first fruit of all men that would die, Jesus became the first fruit of all men that would rise. That means Jesus' resurrection initiated a possibility that did not exist. Let me tell you something. Satan knew about creation. I hope you know he was there when God did creation. He was there. So he felt he had studied the mechanics, the dynamics, the dimensions of God that will warrant the possibility of creation. There are many things about God that Satan felt he had studied. But one thing Satan never knew from when he was created till he fell was resurrection. Because God did not reveal that in his plan. That's why the Bible calls God the only wise God. He's not just the God from beginning to the end. He's the beginning. And Revelation tells us he's the beginning end meaning continuous so every other thing satan thought he knew about god that was why he could gather angels together and rebel against god but satan never knew about resurrection so when man fell satan thought he had doomed the entire race of humankind but he never knew that god had something up his sleeve and that thing was called resurrection how that a dead body can suddenly come alive I thought the Bible says after death is judgment. But that's not the end of that verse. If you stop at that verse, you didn't understand the context. You need to read the next verse. So when Jesus died, the Bible says he was in the belly of the earth, meaning he was in hell. And Satan thought he had control over Jesus. He didn't know that Jesus was only obeying the law of seed time and harvest. And the Bible says on the third day, the glory of the Father resurrection power you know the bible says there was earthquake such that the stone was rolled away understand that the stone was not just put there it was sealed and in those days when romans want to seal a place there are certain things they would tie they would tie certain ropes to that stone and then use concrete to reinforce it so how can you put you, you can't just remove that the bible says the stone was rolled away and when the soldiers saw what happened, they fell as dead. Satan never knew that resurrection existed. And the Bible says in that Romans 6 verse 4, it said, just like Christ was raised from the dead, so also we will do what? Walk in the newness of life. That means the victory that we have is that Christ defied death and was resurrected by the Spirit of God. And your life in Christ functions on the programming of resurrection. No, brother, you are on the wrong verse. Verse 4. That's why you should follow me. Verse 4. In other words, now that you are a believer, everything that should happen in your life should happen by resurrection. Meaning that your life is no longer natural. Because if you try to live naturally, you are already on your way to death. The Bible says, if we live in the flesh, we will die. But if by the Spirit we put to death the deeds of the flesh, we will do what? We will live. He said, now my spirit is, now the flesh is dead. Or now my body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is made alive because of righteousness. He said, but if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he shall quicken. Meaning that now that you are a believer, just the way resurrection happened for Jesus to transmit and translate into becoming the life-giving spirit. The one that death no longer had the control of. You know the Bible says the last enemy to be defeated is death. To us, is yet the last enemy, but to Jesus he has been defeated. That means our future in eternity is Jesus is now. Come on now. And the Bible says that power that raised him. That is the power that should be at work in your life. So that nothing that is called limitation remains a limitation. So that nothing dead in your life stays dead. That's our confession, isn't it? Nothing dead stays dead. Nothing. Why? Because you carry the life-giving spirit. If he can bring liberty to oppression, he can bring liberty to anything that is dying. So we should walk in the newness of life. So your prayer life will function by the resurrection power. Your fasting life will function. Some of you can't fast because Satan deceived you that you have ulcer. That ulcer will be healed today. Today, not tomorrow, today. 
The Bible says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus that he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty, you can become rich again. All of a sudden, prosperity becomes a heritage. And not just a heritage alone, it becomes a reality. That anything that tends to mock the nature of God in you, all of a sudden can change and give expression to the life that you have in Christ. And tonight, that's the power that will be manifested. I said that's the power that will be manifested in this place. I take pleasure in worshipping you, Lord. I'd like you in the next one minute as you're seated. Raise your voice and talk to God. And present every situation in your life that you know needs to be changed. Whether spiritually, financially, physically, materially. This is a miracle service. The Bible says, and when it was evening, they gathered all those who were sick and who were oppressed of the devil. And he healed them all. 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 There's such a grace. Lift your voice and lay it before him. Say, Lord, this situation is not going back with me. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Are you talking to God? Are you praying? You have won it all for me. You have won the victory. Victory over all circumstances, over all situations, over all menace that the enemy has placed in your life. You have won it all for sin that could not hold. your feet now how many of us are ready tonight for a visitation listen listen I'll try I'll try as much as I can to see how we compress time okay I will try my best to see how we compress time I told the Lord to do a very quick walk tonight out of the many things that will happen tonight listen very carefully out of the many things that will happen tonight there are yokes of oppressions that will be broken from the life of people <laughs> the bible says in a moment in the twinkle of an eye as you stand looking at me now it looks like your situations are still staring at you but in a moment in the twinkle of an eye the speed at which god can address a situation is so fast that you won't even know it has happened ten lepers met with jesus and they cried unto him jesus told them go and show yourself to the priest at that point they didn't know that i left the mouth of the master they were healed 
the Bible says, as they went, they saw that they were healed. Meaning that the healing already took place as soon as they met Jesus and he spoke. But then time slowed everything down and brought it to their awareness. So as I'm speaking to us tonight, every situation in your life is under a very intense anointing. And they are about to check out of your life. I thought I had believers in this place. So tonight, if I ask you to pray, pray. If I ask you to shout, shout. This is how you walk with the Spirit. Okay? You have to be obedient. Whatever I ask you to do from this time, do it. And there's going to be an avalanche of the grace of God in this house. I tell you the truth. Many things will lift from people. Some of you carrying bondage and yokes that are family inclined. It's about to leave now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Are we ready tonight? Are we ready tonight? Let me give you two minutes. The Bible says, Bartimaeus cried. And he said, Son of David, have mercy. Notice that his prayer was the same, but his cry increased. It was not repeating, that was not repetition. That was not prayer by repetition. It was just prayer by intensity. You can pray one prayer point, but increase the intensity until the master hears you. Do you know that the Bible says Jesus stood still? Hold on. The, <laughs> the Bible says Jesus stood still. And in Colossians chapter 1, the Bible says, In him all things consist. Meaning that if Jesus stands still, the whole world must stand still. Can you cry to a point where Jesus will stand still? And bring men and systems under a standstill until your case is attended to? Are you ready to do that? I give you two minutes. Raise your voice and cry to Elohim. Just in case you didn't come with an expectation, it's okay. Pray for your neighbor. Lift your voice and pray. Some of you know of yokes of witchcraft, yokes of oppression on your life that must go. I am anointed, but it's not showing. How can I be a child of? That area, that area where the oppression of the enemy has lingered, lift your voice and cry. Lift your voice and cry. Raise your voice and cry. Raise your voice and cry. Call upon the God of Jacob. Thou son of David. Thou king of glory. Have mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For a time, the times of Abraham, yet the set time has come. The set time for your lifting. The set time for your deliverance. The set time for your healing. The set time for your miracle. Come on, cry. Come on, cry. Come on, cry. Shabbat <laughs> Afflictions must go. Chains of darkness must be lifted. Strong walls must be broken. Every high thing must come down. Every strong hold shall be broken. You were the biggest crowd. You will overcome. You will overcome. Every high thing must come down. 
start ministering. One more prayer point. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13 to the Pharisees, when he had healed that woman who was bound for 18 years, he said, ought not this daughter of Abraham, who has been bound by a devil for 18 years, so she was a daughter of the blessing. She was a daughter of the inheritance, but she was bound. There's something God is telling me now that we should pray for most of us some of us here are believers you have seen the glory of god the hand of god in your life but there is this one issue for some of you in your life for some of you in your family that just will not go it looks like every time you encounter the anointing every other thing comes down but this one remains and it looks like it keeps lifting his horn so satan is using it to mock at you for some of you is in your life for some of you is in your family i want you to lift up your voice that stronghold must be torn down today open your mouth and cry open your mouth and cry Turn again our captivity as the streams of the south. Turn again our captivity. Let that stronghold be broken. Let that chain be Let those walls be torn down. Let those strongholds be torn down. Let those strongholds be torn down. Let that yoke be brought under the anointing. And it shall come to pass. 
that the burden of the Assyrians shall be lifted from your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing oh, victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to me oh, oh, Victory belongs to me. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to me. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Now just be still. You are done praying. Just be still. Eyes closed. I want to worship God briefly and then I'll begin to minister. Before today, God told me that there are families here or the families that will be present where certain yokes have been consistent, certain afflictions have been consistent and repeat, repetitive. It's going to break this night. Just be still. In your presence there is joy. Expression of your love. And revelation of your power and might. In 
Your presence I can breathe An awesome offering In the presence of my King Oh Lord my God When I'm in awesome wonder Consider all the works thy hands has made. Just be sensitive. The power of God is already here. I see the star. I hear the roaring thunder. The power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou How great thou The Bible says in Isaiah 42 verse 22 It says, Behold, these are a people robbed They are snared in holes and hidden in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none delivers. For spoil and none cries restore. Eyes closed everybody, hands lifted. Father, under this anointing, under this atmosphere, by the grace of the apostolic and the prophetic, and by your power that is at work in this place, I speak to every individual and every family here, that has been brought under any kind of captivity by the enemy. Repeated patterns. Repeated patterns in families. Repeated afflictions. Father, in the name of your son Jesus. Let those patterns be deleted now. No, don't worry, don't answer. Let those patterns be deleted now. Let those patterns be deleted now. Let your power arrest those spirits. And I command that at the count of seven, they live the life of your people, they live their families, and they live them now and forever. Here yeah, at this miracle service. I'm going to count to seven, and you are going to shout the name Jesus at the top of your voice. And everybody that has that predicament, the power of God is going to come on them and find them out. If you get them, bring them out for me, ushers. Father, I place that anointing on this shout. And in the name of Jesus, I bring pressure upon every spirit that is not of God. Every spirit that is from the pit of hell. Every power of darkness. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, as wax melt before the fire, so let them perish before the presence of God. I declare that the fire of God comes into those lives, into those families, and bring them under pressure. Bring those chains into pieces and bring those spirits out now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shout Jesus. Bring them out, bring them out, bring them out, bring them out. Kabo shake brekete, abra kete kete, labra teke teka pa, sheke brete keta. Go now, go now, go now, go now, go now, go now. Oh, shall speak, bring them out. I want to pray for them. Please lift your hands. Don't worry. Hey. 
Let your power flow in this place. Let your presence flow in this place. I pray for signs and wonders in this place. Let your power flow. That young man there, please shift. Let me see that young man. The one lifting. Look at me from there. Just look at me. As I'm pointing to you, there is a grace that is coming on your life. Your family is going to be delivered from that yoke. And God is equipping you. Father, let that grace come upon him now. Let that grace come upon him mightily. Never be the same. Never be the same. That's it. Never be the same. Never be the same. Please bring your hand down. Father, I want to pray again. Eyes closed. Please. Just allow the Holy Spirit to walk. I want to pray again. Eyes closed. Anyone that is under any form of witchcraft operation. I don't know you, but the power of God will bring you out. Father, anyone that is under any kind of witchcraft manipulation. Whether witchcraft sponsored by one person or witchcraft sponsored by a conglomeration of witches. Father, in the name of Jesus, by this apostolic and prophetic grace, here at this miracle service, I send your fire upon those lives. Let your power fish them out. And I declare by the God of heaven, vengeance upon those witches. Vengeance upon those witches. Vengeance upon witchcraft manipulation. Vengeance upon witchcraft manipulation. I break your yoke now. I break your yoke now. I break your shekete bata. Shabra kata kata. Rekete kapariya kata. Baratsa kapala kete. How great you are How great you are Oh Oh, oh, oh. Bring that lady that one wearing white How great Please quickly, please quickly. Every spirit that has tied your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to leave her now. Let her go. Let her go now. Go in the name of Jesus. It's coming out. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus. I set this family free now. I set them free now. I set them free now. Who is Michael? Michael. 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 I'm going to pray for the ladies shortly. God gave me a special prayer to do today for ladies and for guys. I'm going to pray. Michael. 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 Your Michael. Come, sir. Stand here. What do you do? Are you a student? You are a student? Wait. I'm seeing you. Where's your family? Huh? Not in this state. Where are they? They are in Adama. Eh? Adama. Adama. They are in Adama state. Yeah. Michael, the grace of God is coming on your family. God is breaking every oppression. I see God breaking many things, but I see God breaking the stronghold of lack. I see God breaking the stronghold of lack. And in the name that is above every other name. Look at me, sir. Look at me. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus. I command that stronghold to be broken. Now. Now. Hold my hand. Lord, visit this family. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to pray for these ones in front. 
I'm going to pray for them. Father, every spirit that has held them captive, family or individual here, just be on one chord, please. I want to pray for them, but there are people at the back that the power of God still needs to touch. All of you at the back from that door, down, just lift your hands, eyes closed. Father, who are those around that area that your power must find and set free from anything that looks like a limitation or a yoke? Father, in the name of Jesus, from the left to the right, I already sense the power of God very strong. All across the back there, Lord, as I stretch my hands, let your power find that individual. Find those people now. It is time for your family to rise. It is time for you to rise. It is time for grace to come upon you. As I count to seven, Lord, let your power find them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, no. Watch me. That's it. Bring them. Lord, I pray for these ones in front, all of them here. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over those wicked spirits. Spirits of delay. Spirits of retrogression. Spirits of confusion. I'm praying for them, but there are people in the congregation that the power of God will visit under this category. Spirit that has brought all kinds of yoke and limitations on their life. Right now, in the name that is above every other name. I set you free. I command the fire of God to chase those spirits now. Chase those spirits now. Chase those spirits now. Go now. Go now. Go now. 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 Loose them. 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 You guys have to be sensitive in front. That lady, that one there, come, please come, my dear, come. Please just help your neighbor in case the ushers cannot reach there. Hold my hand. Father, grace. Grace, 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 grace that is bringing a lifting on your life and God says you will no longer struggle with identity, you will no longer struggle with identity crisis, you will no longer struggle to find expression, you will no longer struggle to belong, there is a grace that is coming on you to distinguish you receive that grace in the name of Jesus can I pray for all the ladies done my dear if you are a lady please put your hand on your stomach hey my what's happening there what is that okay shift let me address it from here. You foul devils. At the count of three, I command you to live that life now. Live that life now. Live that life now. Live that life now. One, two, three. Come out of her. I break your, your grip upon that family. I break every... You look at that. I mean, this is... This is real demonic oppression. Real demonic oppression. It says, strangers shall hear my voice and obey. They shall come out frightened from their hideouts. In a name that is above every other name. Every spirit that is not of God, I command you, live that life now. Amen. Go now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus.
She's free. Ladies, put your right hand. There's somebody here, literally this happens with you. Money just gets missing from your hand. Money gets missing. Before it used to, it used to just be your own money. But now even when people give you money, it just gets, you can't, you can't explain it. Especially if they come in a bundle. All of a sudden, the next time you reach out to count it again, it's not the same. Money just gets missing mysteriously. I want to pray for you. It's the spirit of the devourer that has been loosed upon your life that must be removed. I want to pray for you. If you are such, please come. If you are not ashamed, come. Let me pray for you. I'm seeing two guys and one lady. Maybe many people, I'm seeing two guys and one lady. Money just gets missing mysteriously. Two guys and one. Now, you, you people should clear this place now. Clear this place, please. Okay? Yes. Just help them. I think you, you guys just join, please. I think the ushers and the protocol have too much work. Ladies, I'm going to pray for you. Don't worry. Let me see those people. Here. Money just gets missing. Please don't come out at random. Do you know this is your case? Mysteriously, money gets missing. Just come. I want to pray for you. But there are three of you that the power of God will find. There are three of you we need to break the yoke of that devouring spirit. If you can't just pray in the spirit as you are standing. Elanda Bracadale Cabusia. Yes, please. Shift them. Amina Kongos of Ella Hande Vinabai, Comprida House of Ella Kamana, Akiandu, Sagrada Ila Gus, Sakaria Batala Bradish, Bradinabai, Cabina, Mandra Capradilla, Sande Gabede Gabina, Ayana, Nana, 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 eyes closed lift your hands father you want to set them free but you showed me three three of them three of them is a very serious case and they must be released i can't know except you find them by your power lord i stretch my right hand find those three people now at the count of three let your power find them out and set them free one two Three, find them. Find them. Find them. Now the rest, just come. Come, let me touch your hand. I break the yoke of the devourer in the name of Jesus. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. I break it from your life. Ah, Come, sir. What do you do? Please, what do you do, sir? You're a technician. Ah. God is about to give you a breakthrough that will blow your mind. Amen. That's what I saw. When I stretched my hand to shake you, I saw a grace coming on you. A major breakthrough is about to come. This is not something that is strange. You know you have been sensing it recently that something is about to happen that will shift your level. This is not just going to be another job or another contract. It's going to bring a change of level. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare it upon his life. And I'm seeing a grace for ministry. Lord, activate every gift in the name of Jesus. Activate it now in the name of Jesus. That's the power of God. He knows he can just, you can come out for one thing and then he sees a lot of things. Any other person? Madam, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke Ahambra Katobasi Baranda Kapalia. Belikato brase mekai, embrato zamba randa bakoto brende kaperia katai. Just help them, please. If your neighbor is under the anointing and the ushers are not there, make sure you just be your neighbor's keeper. Ria kokabala taya randusa parode suklaban. Where's your husband, ma? Are you married? You are married. Where's your husband? 
is at home ah every captivity in your life lift your hands every captivity comes to an end and god visited anna as he had spoken by the grace of the almighty god i declare divine visitation whatever has been delayed is being restored now in the name of jesus take that grace madam and everything the enemy stole from your life is restored now in the name of jesus weeping and yours for a night joy comes in the morning in jesus name madam <laughs> please help them huh? your concern should be me so that i don't fall amen ah, yeah 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 i would have said a lot of things but let me leave it there madam god is bringing restoration to your family you and your husband everything that the enemy stole in the past every disappointment god is restoring it again and by the name of the god of heaven i declare that in the next 90 days may there be a turnaround that will happen that will be greater than the last 10 years in the name of the lord jesus ladies are you ready lift put your hands on your stomach now many things will happen now healing deliverances as well some of the people that will be delivered now don't even know that they will be delivered they are looking at me don't worry put your hands there oh, oh. Oh. now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty 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 Ladies, put your right hand on your stomach. Close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Mandra kapa legrosipaki. Barando ze bragados kembalagra tembro subradia. Babrando ze brakila abalando ish kabranda bakabrendi kabolai. Malando braski branda la cabran ze braco te ba on su bragi la hatai. Balu hadia u la kataba la gubre ke ba rusia. Barando za branda brakate ba lubrada. Emprado za branda kabaradeba. Jabarataba. Every evil that was projected to any lady here, any woman here. Evil that is causing setback. Evil that is causing affliction evil that is causing any kind of torment anything that was projected against you that is tampering with your destiny right now it comes under pressure by the power of God at the count of seven I want every lady to shout Jesus father I release your power to find and to set free every lady that is under the projections of darkness I release destinies I break chains, I release yokes, I release captivity in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shout Jesus. Shake it, take it, break it, take it, four. Lakoto prosipaka. Mambra katekete. Embrekete kapa. Embrekete brekete. Embrakato parada. Embrata sapariaka. Whatever my father has not planted, let it be uprooted, 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 uprooted. Now! Haraba soko bronde belebe. Ebra do se baradabaha. Leko bonde bradesa. Ambarande se borondabaha. Ambarade Kesu, Ebro Sopro Dobrade. Lift your, put your hands there. Still put your hands there. There are some of you here when you were born. 
something happened and your destiny was tampered with as you place your right hand on your stomach you are making contact with your with your umbilical cord the power of god is going down to your foundation down to your roots down to your generation and in a name that is above every other name at the count of three every evil projection every curse every manipulation of witchcraft that has tampered with the destinies of ladies here at the count of three the fire of god sets you free now one two three i declare freedom now 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 whatever was tied i lose it 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 Make that fire go. Haraka brade zuzu bruno. Hila baraba. Mighty warrior, waiting battle. Jehovah is. Can I still pray? Is that okay? Or are we tired? Can I pray? Just bring it down. There are people the power of God will come upon now. What is what God? Uh, I began to sense it from the beginning of this week that God was going to handle serious deliverance issue. And let me let me tell you, let me tell you this, every one of us, those online and those here, in the next few weeks, it doesn't matter what we are teaching here, there's going to be an abundant grace for deliverance. Amen. I'm telling you, I know Amen. what I've been saying. Yeah. God is showing me a group of persons here where stuff was buried in the ground. And it has become a mast pole by which the menace of witchcraft is terrorizing people in your families. He says, Son of man, what seest thou? I said, I lifted up my eyes and I saw four horns scattered all over Judah and Jerusalem so that no one would dare lift up their head. He says, But I'm sending four carpenters to terrorize the horns. Can you close your eyes everywhere? Just be still. Father, in the name of Jesus. You said that I should do this. I'm not saying this on my own accord. And I pray that you back me up with your grace and your power. Are there people amongst us here that works of witchcraft and satanism, evil roots were buried into the ground and it has become a source point for manipulation over the destinies of family members here present father if there be any amongst us here where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty as i count to seven father let your power visit their foundations visit their backgrounds visit their villages visit their territories where they come from and let whatever it is that you have not planted be uprooted be uprooted. Be uprooted. My God. Thank you, Father, for the release of angels. I see angels, and the angels are the ones uprooting those things. Lord, as I count to seven, let it happen. Uproot whatever was planted that has manipulated the destinies of men here. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Six. Mambra kato basika bala branda kaparia kato. Bashakambrata. I'm seeing two of them. I'm seeing two people, but there may be many. Bala shobranda kaparia taba. Jabranda kaparadia paradia. Rakobo soto. Let it be uprooted. 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 Seven uproots. 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 
A puc! A puc! A puc! You be God, you know be manu. Alpha Omega, you be God. You be God, oh, you be God. Jehovah Nisi, you be God. You be God, oh, you be God. Hold my hand. Thank you, Father, because the yoke is broken from your family. It's broken. It's broken. And I see the Lord activating something inside of you. Father, let it be activated. Men, please stretch your hands before you. Just open your hands like this before you. Your hand represents your productivity. Your hand represents your hard work and your labor. Your hand is the token for your results, the results of your actions. And the Bible says, Say unto the righteous, it is well with him, and he shall eat the fruit of his labors. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every hand that is stretched here. I come against every devouring spirit. Every finance sucking spirit that was released over anyone here. In a name that is above every other name. I break their chains from your life. I break their hold from your life. I break their hold from your life. Father, I anoint these hands and I decree and declare. That whatever they lay their hands in doing, it shall prosper. Yeah. Some of you are blessed, are gifted. But work doesn't look for you. Some of you are so skilled and intelligent. But they always choose other people who are lesser than you than you. I rebuke that spirit that causes bad luck. Yeah. I rebuke that spirit that causes bad luck. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that grace to prosper. Jabranda kapata, le patu jabrakata, mambra kete barusiapa, janda kapare kete kapu, apari se kepavo kiada, yoto barutava, rusa barakate, jabala kute paria. I release that grace now. 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 Help them. I release that grace now. I release that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands down. Is it okay to pray for the sick? And then we're done. Maybe we'll just pray for the sick and then I'll make an altar call, speak over our lives and we'll be done. Father, we give you glory tonight. You're the God of miracles, amazing God. You're the God of wonders, amazing God. You're the God of miracles, amazing God. You're the Father, in the name of Jesus, can I pray? If you are sick, place your hand wherever the sickness is. Listen to me. I'm just going to pray because of our time. Generally speaking, when I pray, I give you a command, not a charge. Not an, not, I'm not begging you. When I pray, I give you a command. Check whatever it is that was wrong with you. If God heals you, come out. In fact, God is showing me something now. That there is somebody here... You've been suffering from a particular ailment. Each time God will heal you. After some time it will return back. And God is just telling me in my ear that the reason is because when God healed you, you did not testify. And you're, because you didn't testify, you left the door open for the enemy to come back. 
they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by what the words of their testimonies are we ready that's not it that's not it look for it father in the name of jesus i pray for everyone present place your hand in that place or your, that section of your body if it's a delicate place just put your hand on your chest and believe god for healing believe god for supernatural healing believe god for healing your hands are on your chest there's somebody god is showing me he's healing you of a heart condition it could be several people but from this what i'm seeing is a male that god is showing me god is healing you from a heart issue something is wrong with your heart that place where your chest is and god is touching you right now father in the name of jesus i come against every disease every infirmity every affliction the bible says he took our infirmities and bore our diseases lord in the name that is above every other name we command the spirits of affliction to leave we command the spirit of disease to leave we command every sickness to leave now lord take every affliction from the life of your people for by his stripes we we are healed i declare the healing power of god on your bodies now i declare the healing power of god on your bodies now agree with me i declare the healing power of god on your bodies now i come against every form of headache i command it to go now amen in the name of jesus amen there's somebody with pains around your side especially these specifics i'm mentioning if you get them let me know there's somebody who pains around your side while you were seated during the service you could feel the pain so you couldn't sit well right now under the sound of my voice god is healing you wherever you are amen goodness i felt i felt the pain leave i was feeling the pain as soon as i said i felt the pain leave me that means that person was healed make sure you get that person in the name of jesus can i pray this prayer don't be ashamed i won't mention names but father every sickness that has been manipulated by the enemy into delicate parts of their bodies you understand what i mean private sections of your body i'm seeing that i'm seeing some spirits leaving that area lord don't ask me how i'm seeing it it's not your business but father i speak sekradi. i speak healing I speak healing. Amen. I command that hernia to go now. 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 Amen. You call it hernia. It's called hernia. I command it to go now. Amen. Check yourself if you are that person. I come against appendicitis. And I cancel that operation now. Amen. I command it to dry up right now. Amen. I come against every pain around the joints of their bodies. I command it to leave now. Amen. And every sickness we couldn't mention because of time, I command the healing right now. Amen. Healing in your blood streams. Amen. Healing in your bones. Amen. Healing in your tissues. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, if you know God has healed you, check yourself very well. If you know God has healed you, or the healing is already in process, where is please just uh, make sure you get them come out so that we can take your testimony quickly and then we'll close you're the god of miracles amazing god. you're the god of wonders amazing god you're the god of miracles Amazing God, say you're the God of miracles. Say, Amazing God, you're the God of miracles. Amazing, say you're the God of miracles. Amazing. I'm seeing a paper it looks like a document 
I'm seeing a paper, it looks like a document. This document belongs to somebody. And as I'm seeing the paper, I don't know whether it looks like a letter or something, but this could be for a contract. I'm seeing the document before me as the Holy Spirit is showing me. At the left hand corner of the document up, you know the way they address letters. I, I see a writing at the left hand of the document up. And then I see the document filled with so many stuff. And it's attached to some other papers. Whoever is in this place that is in the process of a contract, whether contract renewal or a contract to be received, in the name that is above every other name, I call it done here. Amen. I call it done here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will return back with your testimonies. In Jesus' name. God is showing me somebody, you are a lady, I don't know whether you are elderly or you are young. But there's some form of money that is owed, whether you or your family, but I know there's some form of money owed. This money looks like an entitlement that should be paid. I'm seeing some form of money owed. It looks like an entitlement that will be paid. Within the next six weeks, that money is being paid now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, any, anybody? Who was that person with the pain around? As soon as I said it, I felt the pain leave me. You know, sometimes the way God does it is He puts, He makes you feel the affliction. And then all of a sudden, when you feel it's no longer there, it means the person is healed. I felt that pain around the side lift. Who is that person? Let's just take. Ah, and you are in front. Come now, check her and let's know. Now, I will, while they take that testimony, and if you know you are healed, please, just uh, let's take your testimony. While they take that testimony, while all of us are standing, because I want to pray now and then we'll be closed, or we'll close. Please, if you can't, just stand. I've been standing since, Abby. Uh -huh, so stand. If I say stand and receive your miracle, you will stand, but... And stand. Some of you want to be preachers. You 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 can't stand for five minutes. Is that uh, Pastor Kashi? Ah, you're welcome. God bless you. Good to see you. Really honor you. Amen. I want to pray for us, but before that, I want to give this moment for those who need to be saved. The Bible says that the Lord added daily such as were being saved. Every day we will give an opportunity for those who are not born again to be born again. Because that's the reason for why we do all we do. There's no need you come enjoy the power and the grace of God and your life is not safe. If you are not safe, you are not safe. Amen? And let me tell us something. We have not been preaching it in church, but heaven and hell is real. Though. And someday we are going, we are going, but you know, your salvation determines where you are headed. While that testimony is hanging, if you know you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, there's no need for me to preach a long sermon. Listen to this short sermon and come out and say yes to Jesus now. Otherwise, there will be a longer sermon you may not hear. God is calling you to himself. Above everything, the greatest thing that any man can enjoy is relationship with God. If you are here, you say, Apostle, if you are going to talk about it, I will come out. I'm talking about it now. Please, wherever you are, raise your right hand. I want to pray for you. Or perhaps you are here and your life with God has not been smooth. You can best just describe what you do as a churchgoer. Today you are with God. Tomorrow you don't know where you are. And you need to rededicate your life. You need to make your ways right. This is Easter. Let this celebration be fruitful. If you are here and you are under such categories, please raise your right hand. I want to pray for you. Yes, let me hear the testimony. Yes. Come, take, take, take this mic. Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. Sister yes. Happiness Enoch, when she came into the service, the pain was there ever since. 
this someone was going, the pen was there. But immediately after your declaration, the pen left. This pen has been there for over 24 years. I thought you celebrate God more. Some of you, 24 is older than you. 24 years. And now she's free. She's free. My yes, dear, sir. come. Come. Come, climb up. Climb up. You're the God of miracles. Amazing. Hold on. Listen. You don't know what it means to carry a sickness for 24. Some of you think it's stage managed. 24 years. I don't know about you, but I can't carry pain for at least more than a day. 24 years. What side of your body, my dear? What side? This side. Exactly where you are touching. How is the pain like? Very heavy. So that side is heavy. That's exactly what I felt. So that side is usually heavy for you. And some... I went for a scan several times. They said okay. there is nothing. I went for a scan several times. I think I went for a scan three times. They said there is nothing. But the place keep... I even thought it was kidney cells. But I went for several scans. They said there is nothing. But each time I can't sit for long. Each time I sit... I cannot sit well. I have to be supporting myself with my hand. To the glory of God, I am healed. Give God praise. 24 years. Father, this healing is permanent. Amen. Never to return again. Amen. As God heals you, God makes every part of your life whole. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. 24 years. If that was the only miracle this night, that's okay. 24 years. Whatever you came here with that is almost becoming age long ah. or is almost becoming a part of your life, as you are departing from this place, you are dropping it here now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you praise tonight. Yes, are there those who need to say yes to Jesus? Raise your right hand. Let me pray with you quickly and then we'll be done for tonight. Raise your right hand if you are here. Or you are rededicating your life. Okay, so we are all saved, ba? All right. Father, I pray for your people. Raise your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, you spoke to me. Father, you spoke to me and you told me on Monday, while in prayer, that you are releasing the angel of favor to walk with us. Father, if it was not true, then don't honor this word. But if I heard you clearly, I pray that everyone that is here for the sacrifice of coming and staying, may that angel of favor walk with you all through this month. I decree and declare that you will experience supernatural favor. Receive the gift of men and the help of angels. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, for everyone that is trusting you for a financial miracle. Father, if you are the God of heaven and earth, in the next 48 hours, help that young man. In the next 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, let your angels visit your children. And let that miracle be approved. Let that miracle be approved. In the name of Jesus. I pray for their spiritual lives. Everyone whose prayer life is under attack or has grown cold, you can't pray again. Every time you try to pray, you sleep off. In the name that is above every other name, I declare the life of God comes upon your prayer life. Supernatural resurrection. Supernatural resurrection. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, everyone trusting you for a new level under this atmosphere. Everyone that is trusting you for a new level spiritually to enter into a dimension of grace or to enter into the operation of certain giftings or to enter into a dimension of their calling to make their calling and their election sure by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Let the angels of God move around this auditorium Touch those here and those online. I declare a quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I declare a quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I declare a quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I declare a quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I declare a quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I command those gifts to come alive now. Receive grace for a new level. Receive grace for a new level. There are two people that the psalmistry anointing is coming on. Psalmistry, the anointing for psalmistry. Another dimension of worship. Spontaneous and inspirational worship. At the count of three, Father, let your hand find those two people. Let your hand find those two people. One, two, three. Receive that grace. Psalmistry anointing. Like fire upon your hand. Like fire upon your hand. Let me keep praying. There's a grace that God has given to me. I may not have many grace, but I have this one. The ability to stay. The ability to stay in the secret place. The ability to stay in the place of prayer the ability to stay and wait upon God the ability to stay help them the power of God is finding them in the name of Jesus let that grace come upon somebody now let it come upon somebody now the ability to stay the ability to stay the grace to stay stay in power stay in power help them stay in power stay in power I want to impart a grace for fasting because some of you that is what you need to enter another dimension I thank God for how far God has taken you but you see the Bible says there are these kinds if there are these kinds that will not move except by fasting and prayer that means there are dimensions of fasting the same way it came upon Moses listen the same way it came upon Moses Moses forgot about himself with God for 40 days without food or water. He was receiving the commandment. It takes the grace of God to go that far. And Father, such as you have given me, in conjunction with the grace of your spirit that is in this house, everyone desiring you for a grace, the grace to fast, to access you in the place of fasting, the grace to come into new dimensions of the spirit. I release that grace right now. I release that grace right now. I release that grace right now. Let the supernatural superimpose on the natural. Let the super help them. If superimpose on the natural. After tonight, some of you start a fast and you will not know when you pass the time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm still praying. Everyone that is trusting you to enter into a season of encounters, spiritual encounters, I'm telling you, it's going to happen after this night. Some of you from this night, access to visions and dreams, access to see angels, to see saints of old, access to meet with men whom the Lord has invested grace upon, encounters that will change your life that will change your story of work with God. At the count of three, Lord, let it be released upon them. Let that grace for supernatural encounters be released. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. 
Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I and the children that the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders in Israel. Father, I pray for everyone here. I declare that an anointing comes upon you this night and transforms you to become a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. That anointing will make you a sign and a wonder to your generation. A sign and a wonder. Manifest the supernatural like no other. Manifest the supernatural naturally. Manifest the supernatural naturally. In the name of Jesus. Finally, Lord, I pray. Everyone whose progress seems to be slow. And compared to your plan for them, if they continue at that slow pace, they will not arrive at destiny on time. I pray for everyone here, man of God, woman of God, boy, girl, man, woman, young and old. The hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he guided his lawns and had drawn the chariots of Jezreel. When I make this prayer, there's going to be a wide distribution of anointings in this house. I'm telling you, please lift your hands, eyes closed. Father, everyone that is in desire of, of speed, I pray that your right hand will come upon everyone here. And I decree and declare in the days ahead, walk in supernatural speed. Walk in supernatural speed. Let that mantle come upon your life for speed now. Let it come upon your life for speed. Speed, 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 speed. speed. Speed, 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 speed. Everyone that has experienced delay, I want to close, but God is saying I should pray this prayer. Delay in any ramification in the name of Jesus. By the God of Israel, I challenge those spirits, spirits that cause delay, and I command them to live your life, and I decree and declare from today, experience supernatural progression, supernatural progression, supernatural progression. Every life that has been stuck in a place, I command your life to experience a shift now, experience a shift now. Thank you, Father.